How's it going guys and welcome to our gear of the year 2023. Here we are at the table again. Again. We are going to be looking at basically what has been our favorite gear in the entire year of 2023 and there has been some amazing stuff. So we're going to be looking at our favorite folding knife. We're going to be looking at our favorite fixed blade knife. We're going to be looking at our favorite kind of like soft storage, gear storage solution. Soft goods. Yeah, yeah. Our favorite multi-tools. And then, of course, we got to end the thing with a wild card, and we got we got some fun wild cards, I think. Let's kick it off with something that's not even in any of those categories, and that is probably the thing that we were most excited about this year. Would you agree with that? This is the most classic Zach fashion. Here's yes. what we're gonna do, exactly. but not yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that our our favorite knife of the year, and we're going to be completely biased about this, exactly, because it's special to us, and that was our first collaboration, our first project with our name on it. And that was our collaboration OTF with Axial Knives. Axial's based here in Utah, 100% USA made OTF, and they did a collaboration with us. I really like how this turned out. Yes. This is the Axial Shift, and this is our exclusive version of the Shift. Yep. So this particular one had the OD green handles and the Tonto blade that's DLC coated and the fun little logo ad on there. Yep. But So this is our first one. Yeah, that's our first one. And right now, Axial kind of surprised us actually. We have a new exclusive with them, which is really exciting. This one is black, with, they're calling it like an OD green micarta. Once it weathers a bit, it definitely turns a little more green, comes a little more natural, I would say. A little more of a natural color when you first get it. Of course, the Tonto Blade, because that's kind of our signature thing with them, and that's in Magna Cut. And then the big thing is, is that this is their V3 shift. The first shift was super smooth, and we said, like, yeah, this is really, really smooth. I think it's smoother than any Microtech. The V3 is smoother. It's incredible what they were able to do with this mechanism. So it's got new insides. They call it, what, low friction insides? Yeah. Or low, fi yeah. low friction internals. Yeah. And then it has has the cool cage ceramic bearings for the firing mechanism. Yep. So it's just silky smooth. Silky, silky smooth. So super fun to play with, great action, great everything. This is our version. There are only a few left as of right now. So if you want one of these, we have a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link, go over, snag yourself one because these are gonna be gone very soon. And there's like a dozen or so left. So there's not very many left. That being said, they have a bunch of versions of the V3. So if this isn't your flavor and you want an OTF, Go with the Axial Shift V3, they are all good. They have a new textured aluminum one. Yeah. It is just chest kiss. Super awesome. I would say overall, that has been our favorite for the year because our name's on it. We're gonna be a little biased. And here's the thing, American made, really great product. And, uh, and those guys over at Axial, super good dudes, and they are just hustling. They have some amazing stuff in the work that we'll be bringing you guys soon. Uh, folders. My folder of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, do you know what my folder of the year last year was? Was it the Lander one? <laughs> Perfect. My folder of the year. This just dropped a few weeks ago. This yep. is the new Lander 2. So this is a little bit bigger, a little bit more expensive, a little bit more premium version of the Lander. Mm. Lander 2, you got G10 handles, you got an S35VN blade, you have deep carry pocket clip. This runs on a clutch lock. Yep. So this is made by Kaiser, yep. which clutch lock has got to be at least top three, you know, crossbar locks, Easily. if not top two, Easily. probably. Yep. So I know Hogue does a really good Hogue does a really good job with their crossbar lock. Uh, the clutch lock, though, is adjustable. So if you want to get in there and adjust the tension of your clutch lock, mm -hmm. uh, that is super cool. And super easy. That's yes. the other cool thing. It's literally just move the end of a spring into another hole. Like So it's not surgery. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Well, and awesome. with the lander, it's even easier because yeah. these have your quick swappable scales. So right here, you can undo this middle screw. You do have to unscrew the pivot screw this time, yep. but the, there, there's kind of like a pillar in there. So you don't mess up the action or whatever when you do that. And then uh, a couple of these other screws back here and you can flip that scale right off yep. and you can get into that Omega spring and adjust it beautifully. And while you're at it, put a new scale on it. That's the cool thing about the Lander. If you guys don't know with the Lander 1 and with the Lander 2, all of the files and everything that you need to be able to 3D print your own or make your own in Micarta or G10 or whatever it is, all available. So you don't have to guess, you don't have to have special measurements from the maker He's providing all the information you need to make your own scale. So these are the two base models, and then customize away, man. It's only a matter of time before you get all sorts of interesting stuff. Some of my favorites are the last one. They had like these moon crater ones, yeah. which were super cool. So yeah. They were like 3D printed to match actual patterns on the moon. Ben, I sure hope there's going to be moon crater scales I'm sure. for the Lander 2. I'm sure. Lander 2, my pick for, I guess, my knife of the year. All right, so uh, like I said, I'm going to just go ahead and break the mold again right out of the gate because this is what I do. Here's the thing, is I was going through all of the knives that we've gotten, and, and, and there's been some amazing knives in 2023, but I think my favorite has to be the thing that like intrigued me the most, that I carried the most. I found that the thing that I was drawn to the most was more of a category and less of a knife. And some of these are brand new for 2023. Some of these have been around for a little while, 
but the category is actually slip joints. I found myself this year carrying slip joints a lot, way more than I have ever since I was a kid. I'll just show you guys a couple of the ones that kind of have caught my interest. There's this Rough Rider one that I've showed in previous videos. The handle caught my interest. It was very inexpensive. It's Rough Rider. It's like a Chinese made slip joint. I do not like the old Southwest or whatever it says on the blade, but I just think it's a really cool knife. And it just reminded me a lot of knives that I would see literally at gas stations when I was a kid. You just don't see gas station knives like this anymore. They're all like, with skulls and assisted action, and I'm just not a big fan of them anymore. So this was a bit of a nostalgia piece for me. And I carry this one a lot, actually. I carried it a lot. Uh, there is the Boker Atlas series that we've been talking a lot on the channel. Me and Jamie, both huge fans of this. They come in a bunch of different handle materials. You can get one with a locking blade. They come with pocket clips. I mean, these are just really simple, nice slip joints. Uh, obviously, Jack Wolf knives. This was my first year. I got my first Jack Wolf knife. I carried this thing around for a long time. And this one's really cool because I feel like Jack Wolf knives are very community based knives. Like, yeah. this is somebody who is an enthusiast and a collector who is like, I'm not seeing the knife that I want. And I'm going to go ahead and start making those. The walk and talk, the half stop, the experience of the slip joint is all really there, I feel if like. If you want a knife Wolf. with an unboxing experience, like, yeah. go get a Jack Wolf. Yeah. Knife. It's not even unboxing. Yeah, it's, it's like un untubing, uncylindering. <laughs> <laughs> it comes in a really cool kind yeah. of aluminum can. It's a whole experience. It's super cool. Yeah, it's super fun. And then I got this like three-bladed buck knife when we were at Buck Knives and getting some warranty work done. I carried this thing a ton. It doesn't have a half stop, but a great American-made slip joint. Uh, this Mercury knife has shown up on the channel a bit. Just a cool clip point blade made by Mercury Knives in Maniago, Italy. Mercury's been around since the 50s, but I feel like nobody's really talked about them because they did OE work for so many, I mean, decades and decades and decades. And they're just now starting to kind of come out of that OE, like original manufacturer shell and do their own stuff. And this slip joint's one of them. And I think it's amazing. I love the clip point blade. It's got a nice half stop. It's got great walk and talk. Um, and then finally, also out of Italy, is uh, this MKM knife. My Carta, just great action, great everything. I think the blade on this is M3, yeah, M390. So it's just been this weird mix of like American made, Chinese made, Italian made, just slip joints. I think the thread, I think this is why this is my pick for 2023 is slip joints, is because every one of these knives just feels different than all the other knives that we're seeing out there right now, right? Mm -hmm. Every one of these has something unique about them that it's just like, oh yeah, like I'm not seeing modern knives looking like this very much. I think this definitely has been the year of this. I carried a slip joint regularly yeah. for the first time this year, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I carried a compact around Italy. Yeah, so. exactly. So it's just been this thing. So I, I couldn't pick one knife that really is called to me on the on the folding section. My fixed blade was no question. And then just, just to round that out, I don't like pocket granola, um, as you're gonna see with some of the stuff I have on the table. So MKM, as you guys know, they make this amazing little knife holder. It's a magnetic knife holder. It works absolutely stellar. And every one of these knives, I mean, so like, we can take the weird shaped Rough Rider knife, like, no problem, boop. Now it has basically what is a pocket clip, right? Because this sits on your pocket, right? Or we could go with something that's taller, like the Mercury knife, boop. It fits a huge array of knives and it's got that nice magnetic clasp that just goes on your jeans. Absolutely awesome. So I've been uh, pairing my slip joint carries with that MKM thing. And I think that's another reason that I've been carrying slip joints more is because it hasn't been this thing like buried in my pocket. It's been a little more quickly accessible. Like I like my knives to be. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only place I'm really gonna break the mold today. It was a long one, but a good one. I guess the next category, we it, like knife organization, gear organization, I guess is what we could call soft, soft goods organization. Soft goods, gear organization. Yeah, yeah. what did you land on? Cause uh, this is kind of interesting the way you set this up. My pick for soft gear or soft goods, soft goods of the year, there yeah. we go, would be the Naf's tool burrito. Okay. So this is I mean, yeah. this is thirty five bucks. It's like you know heavy canvas, uh, designed obviously by Ben Peterson over at Naf's. And I have this set up a little bit differently than maybe it's one hundred percent intended purpose, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I put all of my kind of like sketching, designing stuff in here instead yeah. of you know just a straight up you know tool burrito where it's all bits and sharpeners and all that stuff. Yep. Like I got a little bit more pens and sharpies and rulers and that type of thing going on in here. But yeah. like it works perfectly for that. So what I do is I pair it with my uh, I have like an A four notebook, right? right. So yeah. I pair it with that A four notebook book and it goes in my bag and it works great so awesome. this is how i have mine set up what do you have what do you have in the uh in the zipper piece over here what right is now it's just a few extra bits and then i have a tiny little three foot tape measure oh okay yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. like J jamie's been doing some nice sketching 
More on that later, probably. <laughs> <laughs> to be determined. Yeah, to be determined. Uh, yeah, so I got... Uh, actually, oh, yeah, you stole my Sharpie. I, I did Thanks. steal your Sharpie. I have, I have this bolt-action Sharpie. I said, Which is so cool. I Link said, in the description. I said you could have it back in No, 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 it's great, it's great. It's great. Uh, I put that in there. I, I do um, mainly just use kind of the, the pencils, pens, and then this NAFS ruler, by the way. Cool. <laughs> it's great for drawing straight lines. If you need a straight line on something. It's true. And it's not, you know, 12 inches long. So. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, this is how I have mine set up, and it's been incredibly useful, and I absolutely love this thing. So, yeah, I think I this it. is the one of the best soft goods things that's come out this year. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I love that the, I mean, it's still knife focused, but I love that it's kind of become this, like, sketch support yeah. type thing. Look at this as an organizer of things. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. have to be a knife toolkit if you don't want to. You yeah. can put all sorts of stuff in it. Yeah. Like I have it probably about 20% knife stuff and like 80% art sketchy stuff. So yep. do what you will with it. I love it. It's well thought out. It's a good looking piece. And there's like a tactile element to it with how nice that canvas feels. Right? Yeah, the yeah. canvas is super nice. Completely agree. Well, speaking of canvas, this is the Hitch and Timber Pocket tool organizer. We did a big video on pocket organizers. I tried them all out. I carried them for a long time. I think last year, actually, I was still rocking the alpaca one. Mm -hmm. And the alpaca one is great. Don't get me wrong. The alpaca one is great. But that top zipper in the alpaca one, it just was a bit of a bugger getting cards in and out. And like, I noticed that when I really loaded it with everything that I wanted it to carry, it was a little too full to be comfortable. You know, like when you just have zippers that are too, too full and they're hard to zip and all of that. So this little pocket pouch, this has been every day for at least the last, what, six or seven months, whenever we released that video, this has been in my pocket and I am absolutely loving it. So I'll show you guys kind of what I carry in it. So uh, carry a pen. This is just whatever pen I have laying around. This is, uh, this is a Zebra. This is one of the cheaper Zebra. F301. Uh, recently we've been doing some stuff with like pens and budgets and stuff. So we have some cool pens laying around. I uh, just haven't put one in there yet. So it's a great little pin though. I like that pen. Obviously I have my Victorinox Compact, my custom compact that I made scales for. And then in the back, I carry my pocket notebook, which is a must. One consideration with the Hitch and Timber piece is that I found that a regular notebook is too much of a fight. It technically can fit. So I just end up cutting a little, when I get a new book, notebook, I just cut like a, I don't know, half inch off or something like that, slides right in and out. To be so. fair though, you also kind of like shove some pliers in there. Exactly, too, so. yeah, 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 yeah. I've definitely made it more full than normal. And then I've got my little five inch Nipex. I've got my uh, 7-Eleven Bic lighter. It will never let you down. And then inside the zipper, uh, I've got my cards, cash, and then I do carry around, uh, actually same as Jamie, I carry around little three foot measuring, little titanium measuring tape that I've really enjoyed. Is that three or six? That one's three. Is that three? Yeah, yeah. I, want, I thought about a six foot one, but it's just too bulky in the whole kit. And here's the thing is, I was just saying I don't like pocket granola. And for this year has been a really big thing for me to try to organize my gear, pare my tools down to the bare essentials. What am I actually using? Uh, you guys hear it on the channel all the time. Carry what you need, need what you carry, right? And these are the things that I legitimately use all the time. And it's so nice to be able to organize them in one place and just have everything where I need it to be and not have 20 things in each pocket and be frustrating. I mean, for example, with just this stuff in my pocket and my pocket knife, I recently picked up a 1976 F-250 High Boy. My dad had it and I'm bringing it and I'm gonna do some restoration work on it. And I was bringing it home and it broke down uh, invariably. <laughs> and uh, it ended up being a fuel filter issue but I didn't know that. And I started looking at the carburetor and there was a bunch of problems with the carburetor. So like on the side of the road with my flashlight and these tools, I rebuilt like half of the carburetor on the side of the road. So that's just the type of stuff I do. If you don't do that type of stuff, you probably don't need all those tools. That's okay. That's my soft good pick for 2023. Speaking of 2023, 2023 has been an awesome year for me and Jamie and for the channel here. And we're grateful for everybody's support. And uh, part of that support, that community support that we get that allows us to do these videos and have the time to do it and the resources to do it is our sponsors. So the sponsor of this video is We and Civivi Knives. In the spirit of this video, my favorite We Civivi Knife of 2023, which is hard to keep track of because they release too many knives. There's a lot. In my opinion, they release too many knives a year. You can't keep track of them all. And certain ones that I think are gems get lost. This is an example of that. It's one of those gems. <sighs> this is the Civivi Voltaic. This is an absolutely stellar knife. 14C28N blade. 
This particular one has micarta insert, stainless steel construction, stainless steel frame lock, which I love me a good frame lock on a budget knife. I just think it's so amazing. Deep carry pocket clip, you can put it on the front or back side of that. It's a bigger knife, like I've got a medium to large size hand, tons of blade to handle ratio, which I absolutely love. Everything about this knife, I love. And it used to be like 80 bucks or something like that, which is, I think is a totally fair price for such a stellar knife and a, and a company that has such a proven record with quality. And because we release too many knives every year, this knife is now discontinued. <laughs> so it's my favorite from 2023. It's already gone. But here's the thing. But the silver lining this is, is the, very sweet. Here's the silver lining is I literally cannot recommend this knife enough. And here's the beauty. It's discontinued. It is half off right now. You can get this knife, all the specs I just gave you, for like 42 bucks. So on Amazon or at Wii, I've got links down in the description. You're gonna win. Like this is a win all Get time. it before it's gone, because when it's gone, it's gone. Yeah, and it is stellar. Like I am heartbroken that they're getting rid of this knife, but uh, you know, I guess uh, you guys get a win because they are getting rid of it. So, the Civivi Voltaic. You know what knife they're not getting rid of? <laughs> I this do. pink Cubit. Yes. <laughs> So you pulled this out when we were doing our gift guide. Yep, correct. And you're like, oh, the ladies or whatever can yeah. carry this knife. Yeah, or whoever, whatever. Right? And I was yeah. like, I'm gonna carry this knife. <laughs> exactly. So I haven't actually officially put it in my pocket yet. I've <laughs> had it on the docket, but I'm gonna put this Cubit in my pocket soon, yeah. pink and all, and I'm so excited about it. The Cubit's great. It's like a super high grind, thin slicey blade button lock, reversible pocket clip. Like it's a great little knife. Yeah. I think it goes for 65-ish dollars. Yeah. Depending on what version you get, yeah. you can different, do different versions. So if you're looking for something super slicey, you know, a little fidgety with a button lock, check out the Cubit. I really like them and I really like this pink one yeah. and I'm gonna carry it. I love it, I absolutely love it. Jamie, when he saw that, he's like, I'm carrying that knife. I'm like, sick dude, carry it. <laughs> but it also has a bottle opener on it too. Yeah, it has a bottle opener, which interesting. is kind of like a fun little, fun little building. Thank you, Wee Civivi, for sponsoring our channel, The Voltaic. It's, it's a huge loss, but a huge win, I guess. It's, it's both sides. Yeah, I mean, assuming you can get one before it's gone. Before gone. it's gone, gone, exactly. Then it's just a huge loss. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> fixed plates. What knife did you pick for your uh, 2023 pick for fixed plates? So this is the Boker Bronco. It comes in a few different flavors. You can get a basic version, which is basically this without the fire steel. It's a little bit cheaper. You can get a smaller version that just came out. There's a new, new one coming out that's basically the smaller version with a Scandi grind. They're bringing out different versions and different price points of this knife. But I think the highlighting features of this are this rubberized handle, essentially. Mm -hmm. And then it's all 3V with a, a sharpened spine. If you're looking for, I know Benchmade came out with the Leku and the Puko uh, that are now discontinued. But if you're looking for a knife in that vein, this is it, man. This is a great shape. It's super comfy. It's super high quality steel. It's tough as nails. Um, if you're looking for a bushcrafty-ish knife, maybe pushing slightly into that survival-ish, but not mm. quite, Boker Bronco is where it's at. Yeah, and agreed. I love this thing. Yeah, full, full tang 3V. You've got this full grain leather like sheath that comes with the dangle already. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's the thing is... The, the two Benchmade knives that Jamie mentioned are discontinued, but uh, me and Jamie both own both of those knives. Yeah. And uh, this has unseated the Leku. This replaced the Leku for Jamie because he's just like, I like it better. So There's yeah. something about this handle texture. It's really good. Yeah, it's real good. And it's made in Solon in Germany. So yeah. If you're all, for a German-made knife. All German name, which is super red. Beautiful. Yeah. So highly recommend the Boca Bronco. All right, cool. Mine is an in-pocket fixed blade along with... Uh, slip joints. In-pocket flex blades has been a huge thing for me this year. Um, I've been carrying, I would say it's probably been 50-50. Like 50% 50 of the year has been fixed blade and 50% of the year has been some sort of a folder. And uh, the one that I, I kept having to fight putting in my pocket regularly is the Doughboy Blades Beekeeper. This is just a, a small maker out of Texas. Super great guy. Met him at a blade show in Georgia. We kind of talked some knives. We talked some stuff. And then out of the blue, he sent us a package. And in that was this knife. And uh, at first, I was like, okay, cool. Like, it's it's cool looking. Like, it, it feels a little, maybe a little more purpose-built or a little pointier than I kind of like my knives. And I was like, I'm going to give it a shot because he's a cool guy. And so I started carrying this thing, and I just absolutely love it. I have found it to be kind of the perfect size for like an EDC utility style knife. And there's something about the shape, this like very utilitarian, just very like purposeful knife shape that I really enjoy as well. And then the molding in the handle, like I don't know if he like 3D scanned my hand or whatever, but it feels custom made the way that these, these uh, different grind points are. 
my hand just fits into this knife so comfortably. It just feels really great. I've used it just kind of for regular EDC tasks. I've used it for fire making. I've used it for like prying on stuff, which I probably shouldn't do. I still can't believe I didn't break the tip when I was messing around. Just really, really great knife. Really yeah. enjoyed it. Something to be said though, he is a very small maker. Stock is uh, iffy sometimes. Yeah. I really don't know how his process works. I just know that this fixed blade, I could not get it out of my pocket all year. And I just absolutely love this knife. And then it comes with a, uh, just kind of like a nice little Kydex sheath. I have found that the pocket clip on the sheath, it works, it goes in pocket. It works fine, but it gets a little loose over time. I'm also really hard on my stuff, so that may not be everybody's experiences. That has been my experience. So what I've been uh, kind of playing around with is right back to that MKM magnetic sheath. This is for the macro. This is a bigger sheath, and you can buy this sheath separate. You can just buy the sheath from MKM. Just magnetic, goes in the pocket, and I found this to be really, really rad. Now, this knife is very pointy. Yeah, um, be careful. So yeah, I'm not sure if it's gonna end up pointing through the leather eventually. That would just be me uh, <laughs> putting the wrong knife in the wrong sheath. I have very much liked the combination of that sheath and that knife, but yeah. Great knife. Your multi-tool is not going to be surprised, I think, to anybody who watches the channel. Drum roll, please. The suspense is killing me. My multi-tool year is the Leatherman Arc. Yeah. I daily carried a free P2 for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. This is just the evolution of that carry, I guess. So one of my main complaints of the P2 was that it had that weird serrated blade that shaved your skin off your every time you opened it. thumb every time you <laughs> opened it. Wasn't a huge fan of it, but I did it and it was a knife blade and it kind of works. So this has got a thumb stud with a magna cut blade. It's beautiful. It's got all of the other tools that you would need uh, in a multi-tool. That's one of the things about the Arc that's probably one of its strong suits is its tool set, right? Yeah. We've talked about multi-tools a lot on the channel because me and Jamie are both big fans of multi-tools tools. And the reality of it is, is I feel like in a lot of knives, and Leatherman is just as guilty as this, in a lot of multi-tools, you get a tool set that's just like, okay, like you just threw in two or three of these tools to say it has more tools. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, I'm never going to use those. But the Leatherman Arc, I'm with you. The tool spread in the Arc, I'm like, wow, those are all tools that I do and have used on a fairly regular basis. Yeah, you it's know what I mean? crazy when you have a tool in your pocket, how much you actually use it. I remember I was using the files, was putting some 3D printed stuff together. I recently just used the micro driver to kind of like poke at some clips that I was putting on my truck. The bit driver is self-explanatory. The knife I use all the time. The scissors is, is handy. There's just a ton of stuff on here yep. that is super useful and I feel like the economy of space that they utilize on this is just fantastic. We've got an idea on potentially a cool Leatherman Arc mod. So let us know if you guys want to see a Leatherman Arc mod video and maybe we can figure out actually yeah. how to do it. So <laughs> Leatherman Arc, I feel like it's got to be one of the best tool sets on a multi-tool that's out there. Agreed. It's like one of the only regularly produced multi-tools that has like a real knife blade on it. Yeah. Like it's not just actual, a whatever yeah. knife blade. Um, and you know, and it should be noted that there were a few people that had problems with the cutters on the Leatherman Arc, which I know is not an issue for you because you don't really use the cutters on the pliers. Right. Um, but the cool thing about that is, you know, like uh, it, it seems as though there's probably a tempering process that went wrong with some of the hardening on the cutters. Um, and the cool thing about that is Leatherman has an absolutely stellar warranty. So if you were somebody who got an Arc and your cutters ended up not being great, just submit a warranty claim, they'll send you some new ones, no yeah. big deal. Well, I've so. got that classic 25 year warranty. Exactly. It's a good one. It's my favorite of the year. My favorite's a little weird and that's okay. <laughs> so my favorite of the year actually is because of Jamie. Uh, this is a Victorinox Swiss card, which seems a little weird. It's a little out of place, but here's the thing. Both me and Jamie are big multi-tool guys. We've done a ton of stuff with multi-tools here on the channel. We'll continue to do a ton of stuff with multi-tools on the channel. And if we're talking about something new or we're talking about something that I, I haven't carried already or we haven't reviewed on the channel, right? That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about our favorites from 2023. So it's not my favorites of all time. And my favorite from 23 is legitimately this Victorinox Swiss card. And this specifically is the nail care kit. So Jamie put together an absolutely amazing EDC kit. You guys, check out the video. It's like, he blew mine out of the water. I'm actually retooling mine. We're gonna do a whole video on me retooling my EDC kit because of the way that Jamie ended up building his out and this is something that you included in yours. So it's TSA approved, so if you fly or whatever a lot, uh, that's great, because then you don't have to be taking that in and out of your kit all day, which is awesome. But it's got everything that I love about my Victorinox Compact that you can't get on a normal knife. It's got the toothpick, it's got the tweezers, it has the ballpoint pen, which I actually use regularly on my Compact. It has this little driver tool. So you've got a handful of drivers on there that can be helpful and useful. It's got a pair of scissors in there. So you're not completely without a cutting tool. If this is, you know, if you're, again, if you're somewhere that you can't carry a knife, you still have a pair of scissors. So you have that ability. It even has little reset pin, whatever you want to use it for pin 
in the body of it, which again, it's just a really neat, useful little tool for like popping out SIM cards or like resetting routers or like any sort of little thing like that. I use it for digging out slivers like mm -hmm. all the time. I think a very unique tool set, kind of a surprise. It's just something different, yeah. you know? I think if you're building an ADC kit, don't sleep on the Swiss yes. cards. Yep, 100% agree. Whether it's the nail care one, I think there's probably two or three different. Yeah, I, I know when I was three different when I was a kid, cards. I had one that had like a little crappy light on it and mm -hmm. a little knife in it yeah. or whatever. But that's what I love about this is, is kind of going back to the idea with the, the Leatherman Arc. I don't feel like any tools in this are wasted. Now, I'm not the type of guy that does my nails, um, so there is a file in here that I probably don't have much use for, but it doesn't mean it can't come in useful at some point. I've used it. Yeah, there you go, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> my multi-tool of the year is the is the Swiss card. It's like 40, 45 bucks, and I think it's just a great tool set that people just aren't talking about. Mm -hmm. So I feel like in general, Victorinox kind of gets forgotten about, and they make incredible tools. They just do. I think sometimes they can be considered not super cool or tactical yeah. or whatever, yeah. but uh, they think through stuff, man. Wild card. Wild card. What do you got for your kind of your your favorite piece of gear from 2023? Just yeah. the Pro PA. So obviously the Pro PA came out this year. So if you wanted a more professional, uh, you know, more stones, more angle options, more more options stability, for, yeah, more big all, knives, small all knives, that stuff, everything. And you yeah. like their original guided sharpener. Yep. Uh, the Pro PA is out now. I think the Pro PA uh, is my wild card of the year. I think it's sharpener of the year. Um, I think it's a fantastic device. I completely agree with you. And and this is something that I always say on the channel is, since I got the original uh, Precision Adjust, um, I have become better at sharpening. The Pro PA obviously took me to the next level as well with like bigger knives, smaller knives, more stability, that type of thing. And here's the thing, I'm never going to be a professional sharpener. I just don't, I don't care enough to, to be that guy that gets the mere finish and all of that. Yeah. And that's what I love about WorkSharp is, is that they take somebody like me who's just been sharpening on stones, at, poorly sharpening on stones my whole life, just enough to like have an edge and uh, making it so that I can actually properly sharpen a knife and like have a really razor sharp knife. And, and like whether it's the precision just the Pro PA, doesn't matter. Like WorkSharp is bringing sharpening to the masses. And that's why I think I'm with you 100%. This is the sharpener of the year, hands down. So you're saying that you'll never be a Neves knives? I will never be Neves. Neves, <laughs> he, it, like, he's so amazing. He's such an amazing sharpener, and I love looking at his work, but I'm like, I'll never be that guy. I just never will be. <laughs> if you want, or, or the guys like over yeah. DBK, the DBK boys, they're amazing sharpeners. They do it on stones. If you, I'll never be that if guy. If you want some good sharpening content, go check out Neves. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Uh, we got we have to leave for yours. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, mine is so wild that we have to leave. But the good news is, is uh, you're going to get a look at the, uh, the truck I picked up. All right. So my wild card is right here. It's something it's a work in progress, but I'm really proud of it. And that is my toolbox setup. <laughs> it might sound silly, but here's the thing is I travel around a lot. I'm kind of the designated friends and family mechanic. And so I find myself having to travel around a lot with my tools and I have tried, I mean over the last 15 years, I've tried every system known to man to try to carry around all my tools and not have a million things and still be easy to get to the tools and not have to carry like, you know, 15 different heavy bags. So this is what I came up with. You can find these on Amazon. I kind of hacked this one together. So I'm gonna, I'll walk you guys through this one just a little bit. All of these sections break apart. So this is a section, this is a section, this is a section, this is a section. And I'll show you how that all works here in just a second. And then in the top here, this is kind of just all of my like bang and grab tools. So this is like extensions, small drivers. I've got hammers. I put together using knife holders. Uh, I've put together little holders for specialty bits or specialty sockets, things like that. Kind of just like your basic need to grab, get stuff done quick uh, set of tools. Then I recently made an addition to this thing, which is this section right here. And this one's a bit of a work in progress. So right now it's just extra storage. So I've got some electrical testing stuff, some specialty drivers, distributor wrenches. Of course I got my little Milwaukee sledgehammer. Um, and then a couple other specialty drivers. But what that's going to eventually be is that's eventually going to be all of my kind of open-ended wrenches. Then this section right here, I've uh, put foam and I cut apart the box that I was carrying around all of my socket drivers. And so I've got my deep sockets, I've got my shallow sockets, and then of course I have my wrenches. And that's my metric. That's my standard. Got a big boy right there just in case. And then in the bottom section, I can carry some different drills around, 
This is a life changer. If you work on cars, just get one. It's so good. <laughs> and then uh, right now, currently, I carry around my wrenches in some uh, in some kind of fold-out deals. And this is how I've been carrying them for years. But with the addition of that red section, I'll be able to put these in a drawer as well. So I'll have just like standard access to them right away, which is going to be really cool. There we go. And then that will be where I put those wrenches, uh, those drills, I mean, and like solvents and stuff once I get the open-ended wrenches in this side. Okay, so now here's the really cool part. So it, it splits apart into a couple different sections. I split it in half when I'm working from the car. So uh, I mentioned I had just picked up an F250 high boy, a 76 F250 high boy, which is right here, by the way, you guys get to see it. And uh, had some roadside troubles. The tools in my pocket got me almost all the way home. I thought there was a bigger problem. Uh, it turned out it was just a fuel filter. I'll show you guys the fuel filter because it's funny. So uh, we pull these out. They set right on top of each other. And then they lock in. So wherever I'm going, whatever I'm doing, I can just roll that thing around. Whether it's going into a junkyard, going into a buddy's you know backyard to help him with a car, whatever it happens to be. Now you'll notice that these are non-locking. They don't just hold close. So... I made myself a little, just a piece of all thread, washer and a couple nuts. And then that goes right down here. And now that holds all of my drawers close while I'm uh, transporting it. I think it's a really slick system. I'm really proud of this. Uh, it is two toolboxes put together. The standard one comes with this, this, and this. The red piece is extra. It was definitely a little spendy. I got the gray stuff at IFA on sale during a holiday sale last year. And I think I got the gray set for like a hundred bucks. It's usually two. And then I bought a red set off Amazon, which again is $200. So I just took this piece off. I sold the other half. I think I'm like a buck 50 in, maybe 200 in. But for something so modular that does everything I need it to do and carries basically every one of my mechanics tools, 100% worth it. Let me just show you really quick, cause it's fun. I went through four fuel filters. So I'm gonna have to pull the tank clean the tank out. So even with just my pocket tools, I could have got this thing all the way home, but I've got that nice travel set. That's probably a lot, but I'm really proud of it. And I hope that you guys can adopt that same system and uh, let's jump back to the table. So yeah, it's still a bit of work in progress, right? But I am so stoked on that tool chest. Like my entire life, I have struggled with the tools and going to the junkyard and, and, and travel. You know, I'm like always traveling, helping somebody with their car. Um, so I'm really excited. I think we did it. As always, thank you so much for the support on the channel and thank you so much for the support in everything that we do. It really means a lot. 2024 has got some big stuff coming. Thanks as always, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.